Welcome to Capital Hoops Live here at DMVStream.com. Welcome back for uh, another episode here as we get into the postseason of high school basketball. We've got tons and tons of uh, championship and playoff action to bring you, uh, interviews from some after those games, and we'll be looking at some of the brackets for the Maryland, uh, the Maryland State playoffs in the public sector. Um, and some other tournaments that are that are going to be finishing out the year here. Uh, before we start, just want to let everyone know, DMVStream.com broadcasts pro, amateur, college, high, high school, AAU, and youth games in the DMV. Um, they can be accessed through televisions, computers, uh, tablets, and smartphones. Uh, the first thing we're going to do uh, today is... I have just put together Capital Hoops February Plays of the Month. I have not released them on the website or on YouTube yet. So if you're watching this show live, you will have first crack at watching um, February Plays of the Month. So without further ado, here they are.
have it, folks. Uh, February plays of the month. Uh, play number one was Darian Bryant's half-court shot to beat DeMatha in the WCAC quarterfinals. Might be the Capitol Hoops play of the year. Uh, still still got a few weeks left in the season, though, to, to make a push at that. But uh, I think the next thing we're going to do here, there were some big playoff games, some big championships this past week. Um, a couple nights ago, we were out at Coolidge High School for the DCI AA championship that uh, had Roosevelt and Coolidge matched up. Uh, it was a phenomenal game, and uh, I think we're going to take you to some highlights and a couple interviews of that game, Coolidge and Roosevelt. Now, last year, Coolidge won the DCI AA so they're going for back-to-back -back championships there at Coolidge.
like this before. So it was a lot of like six man energy. We just tried to like stay focused and not let nothing get to us. But our fans was out there and they was helping. The rivalry that you kind of established with uh, with Roosevelt. It seems like every time you play, it's hostile, it's gritty. Talk about you know what it's like to be out there in that type of rivalry. Um, we've been going at this for years. It's like us and Rose, every every championship is us and Rose. And we always gonna play them three times. Them and Wilson. And them our two main focuses then. That's the moment I'm dreaming of. That's why I like, shoot all those free throws for in practice. Uh, with teammates there have to run if you don't make them. That's the same thing. I pretend like I'm in practice and knock them down. So that was the DCI AA championship. Uh, great game. Uh, Corey Cooley Jr. for Coolidge uh, had the game-winning free throw uh, with about 11 seconds left. Um, after the game, uh, they were giving awards out, giving trophies to the players, and a real ugly scene. Um, a bit of a brawl broke out between, it appeared like it was Ro uh, sorry, Roosevelt players and Coolidge fans, the cheerleaders were involved. Um, not the way you want to see, you know, a championship kind of celebration end. Um, they, they stopped giving trophies out and just put an end to the celebration when it was about halfway done. So players weren't given their trophies. I'm um, being told that the presentation will be tomorrow night at Coolidge after the first round of their, uh, of the tournament that they're playing in that starts tomorrow. Um... Now we're going to go back to the game we were at last night. This was a uh, Maryland 4A West regional semifinal game. Winner of this game was to be paired with the winner of the Churchill Quince Orchard game. Quince Orchard won that game. So this was Kennedy and Magruder. Uh, with a win, they advanced to play in a game that gets them to the Comcast Center. Here's a quick highlight package of Magruder and Kennedy. Thank <laughs> you. 
Uh, you know, we want to come out with energy, definitely step it up on defense. They uh, hit a little too many threes in the first half, so we definitely stepped up on that, started playing zone in the second half, and definitely tried to get after it. We knew defense would turn into offense, try to get in transition, get easy layups. Matchup, you know, he's a good player. Everybody was hyping it up, saying that it was, this was going to be the matchup, you know, uh, me versus him. And, um, I mean, I just kept my composure and worried about the dub was more important to me. So I went out there and just played team. It's definitely hard to beat uh, three, a team three times in a season. I mean, definitely like that, like Sherwood last year. It was definitely tough to beat them in the third game. But uh, you just got to come prepare every game, prepare for the next game, and uh, just try to get better every day. The plan obviously was to slow the game down. I mean, Magruder is a, a team that has four or five guys who average between eight and what, 18 points. You know, and, uh, and they average almost, what, 68.8 points a game. We average high 50s, low 60s, you know. So I knew coming to the game, if we were going to be successful, we'd have to make them play the style that we want to play, slow it down. But unfortunately for us, that's not how we've played all year. We've always played up-tempo. And I think certain times during the game, I've always shot quickly. And because they're a veteran team, well-coached team, they took advantage of our quick shots and pushed it down and scored. Into this game, the game plan was to stop uh, Nick Griffin and – Stop JJ. Um, JJ didn't score as much as I thought he would, and neither did Nick Griffin. But I mean, we couldn't get our offense going. We couldn't ever get in the rhythm. So it was hard to. Once they went into the zone, the second half, it was real hard to find us. All right. So there you have it from Magruder High School. That last player that we interviewed there at the very end that was Marcus Murray, point guard for Kennedy. Marcus was a four-year starter at Kennedy, uh, one of the more decorated players of, you know, of, of, of this era. Um, you know, Murray may be someone who you haven't heard of before. You know, obviously his career is over right now, but he was just a joy to watch. Um, he was a small guy, about J.J. upsize, maybe an inch taller, 5'7", five, 5'8". Five, um, you know, early in his career, he was more of a scorer has never had problems scoring the ball. But as he progressed in his career, um, this year he became a pass-first point guard, um, was just tremendous at getting his teammates involved. And then, you know, when the defense would, would, would sag, he would, he, he would score, his, you know, score his points. A averaged about, I want to say, 18, 19 a game this year. Um, but he was a tremendous player, and hopefully someone will give him a look on the D1 level. I know as of right now he's not signed anywhere, but we'll be we'll be following Marcus. Now what we're going to do here, we're going to go through some brackets. Um, we are going to take a look at where we are in the Maryland State Tournament and in some other tournaments around here. Um, I think first thing we're going to do, we're going to take a look at the Maryland 4A bracket. I don't know how well you guys can see this bracket, but this is the 4A. If we start here, on the top left, Roosevelt and Wise will play for the South Championship. Winner of that game goes to Comcast. And the winner of that game will play the winner of North Point and Arundel. And that will be in the Maryland semifinal. Um, that will be on the 14th, which is a Thursday. Now on the other side of the bracket, we've got Magruder and Quince Orchard. Those teams have already played twice this year. Um, Magruder won both. The winner of that game will face the winner of Paint Branch and Polly out of Baltimore. Polly is having a great season. Um, that should be a good game. That game is at Paint Branch. And the winner of those two will, will meet with a, a berth to the state championship on the line. We'll now look at the 3A bracket. Um, in the 3A bracket in the south, we've got Potomac and Thomas Stone. That should be a great ball game. We've got Dion Wiley on Potomac, Michael Briscoe on Thomas Stone. Great guard play. Um, that game is at Potomac. I think most people expect Potomac to win that game. Uh, the winner of that game will play the winner of the 3A East Championship, which is Annapolis and Reservoir. Then if we go on the other side, Tuscarora and Urbana will play in the 3A West title. The winner of that will play against Milford Mill and City. 
two Baltimore City school, two, well, one Baltimore City, one Baltimore County school. Um, I think I think most people are picking Potomac to win the 3A championship, although Milford Mill um, is a very, very good, very balanced team, so they may have something to, to say about that as well. We move to the 2A. In the 2A, only undefeated team in the state of Maryland, Oakland Mills, plays Calvert. That game is scheduled for tomorrow night. Um, they will play the winner of Wacomico and Joppatown in the first Maryland uh, semifinal. Um, then we head over to the West region where Oakdale and Poolsville, a Montgomery County team, will play. And they will play the winner of the edmondson Randallstown game. Now, Edmondson and Oakland Mills are definitely the favorites to win the 2A. And if those two teams do get to the 2A championship, that should be quite, quite a ball game. Now we're going to look at the 1A bracket here. In the 1A bracket, Dunbar, which is the top team in the 1A South, is the clear favorite to win it. The only other team that could possibly give them a run for their money is Newtown. They're on the top of the, the North 1A North bracket. Um, so that's how we look at the 1A. Now outside of uh, the state of Maryland, we're going to look at the D.C. City Tournament. Um, semi, or the quarterfinals for D.C. City Tournament will be tomorrow evening at the home school of the higher seeds. So Roosevelt will be at home at 6 against National Collegiate. Coolidge will be at home at 6, Ballou home at 6, and McKinley home at 6. So we got four DCI AA teams that are occupying the top four seeds in this tournament. The championship for this tournament will be Monday night at the Verizon Center. Um, unfortunately, the way the seedings came out, it looks like if Coolidge and Roosevelt both win, they're going to be playing in the semifinals. I know all DMV basketball followers would love to see Coolidge and Roosevelt go at it at the Verizon Center for, you know, a city title on the line. But unfortunately, that's not going to happen. And the last bracket we're going to look at, this was the Virginia Private School Tournament. O'Connell was the number two seed. Paul VI was the number one seed. Paul VI lost in the first round. Um, O'Connell made it to the championship game, but lost to Benedictine of Richmond, Virginia. Uh, ben Benedictine, you've probably heard of. Uh, their former coach, Sean McLoom, is currently the head coach at St. John's High School in the WCAC here. So congratulations for winning that championship, Benedictine, the number four seed. There is some sad news to, to bring to you guys. I'm not sure if everyone has heard, but... The Maryland Private School Tournament, which they had just announced about a week ago. It's going to be the first one ever. Um, there was a first-round matchup between DeMatha and Princeton Day. Um, a lot of storylines in that. Jerron Martin of Princeton Day was scheduled to go play at McNamara, the school he left midway through the season this year. After you know some teams pulled out of that tournament, it's been... They, they've decided to cancel that tournament. So that tournament will no longer be played. Um, so we've got the D.C. the DC City Tournament this weekend. We've got Maryland State Semifinals uh, tomorrow night, Friday night. And then the Maryland State Championships will be next weekend, the 16th and 17th. So that's it for this week. Um, again, this is Mark Stern, president of Capital Hoops. If you've got any questions, any comments for me, feel free to, you know, email me or hit me on Twitter. I'm at Capital Hoops. That's at Capital Hoops. Um, another thing we're doing is we're going to be coming out with the top 10 dunks of the year in the DMV. If you have a dunk that you think is worthy of making this top 10, please send me an email or a, tw or a tweet. And let me know about that dunk, and I'll rank it amongst all the other dunks that I've shot this year, and, other, and a handful of dunks that people have already submitted to me, and hopefully your dunk will make it. 
We're hoping to come out with the top 10 dunks um, probably at the end of March once all the tournaments are over with before the All-Star Games start up. So that's it from Capital Hoops Live. We will see everyone next week. Thanks for tuning in and have a great week.